Hello, my friends, and well, today we're going to be sort of doing a addendum, I guess you would be, to the FT-17. So this is the Stormtrooper. This was going to be part of Large Diorama, which, if you look at the last episode of the FT, you realize, of course, that I bailed on that because it was just going to be too overwhelming. This is a fantastic figure. It's from John Smith Model Bow. It's a great resin figure, 1 16th scale. Let's take a look at what's inside here. Notice the packaging is super nice because we have not only a couple of different heads to work with, the business card on the inside had a 1 35th scale figure head to, just as a bonus piece, and of course our resin parts in order to make the figure. And if that weren't enough, we have a painting guide as well. So this is quite a, quite a complete kit. Okay, let's get started with the painting. Now, you've all hopefully been following my, my kind of journey into figure painting over the last, gosh, what it's been, a little more than a year now. And I've tried all sorts of different techniques, and I've got a, to a few patterns and rhythms and things that I like to do. One sixteenth scale, well, we are larger. So once again, we can do some different things here. And the airbrush is actually quite the, quite the good weapon of choice here. Of course, the goal here, as with any model, is appearance overall. Adding those highlights, accentuating some of those shadows, and just doing that with the airbrush in very light and thin coats of paint. And even though this is 1 16th scale, I'm still following my basic, you know, philosophy or trend of how I paint figures, which is I start with the face, because if I can get the face and the head starting to look great or good, <laughs> good in my case, then I feel like the rest of the model or the rest of the figure will will follow suit. So this is always my first concentration is to get a good start on the figure's face. And now that I have those base colors, the flesh colors, basically in place, they're blocked in using the airbrush, the highlights and the shadows, the tones. Now I can come back in with the traditional paintbrush and start adding all those details. Oh, and at this scale, of course, there's the eyes, and of course, we have to take care of those eyes. Uh, yeah, you can't just <laughs> leave them black. So, there's some careful painting with an off-white color here. This happens to be ivory, and I'll just block the eye, eye in, the whites of the eyes in, and then I'll come back in and add the pupils and the iris, and even just a little bit of reflection. I was able to get that in as well. So let's move on to the helmet here because I think this is kind of an important part of the theme of this figure. I did a little bit of research on this fellow, the, the guy that, the actual fellow that was in the photograph. And I went into some of the archives about the photograph and, and camouflage and things like that. And it turns out that they were able to determine that the helmet itself was a camouflaged helmet. And once I learned that, I thought, well, this is going to be a real nice pop of color that I can put onto this to this figure as well. So, so it's all Gen 3 paints sprayed kind of a light ochre color as the base and coming back in with the paintbrush and adding the camouflage blocks of, of color. And then of course those very distinctive and traditional, of course the FT-17 had the same type of a black outlining of the different camouflage patterns. So now with the helmet complete, I can add it onto the figure here, and I can really see how the head and the upper body is gonna to start to come together, and I can add those last few details onto the face, just accentuating some of those shadows, bring out some of those highlights here and there. Well, I'm feeling okay about the face and the head now, so let's go ahead and move on to the body or the torso of the figure. I'll follow the same process here. We'll add the base color and the shadows, the preliminary shadows and highlights using the airbrush. So base color on first. We'll take it 
like basically upside down, add those shadow colors, and then come from the top and add the highlight colors. And with those base colors established through the airbrush, then we just come back in with the traditional brush and start adding in all those details. Well, speaking of painting out details, this guy was really loaded down with equipment. So all of these items, the gas mask container, his rifle, the pickaxe, his dagger, water bottle, etc. All these other items, these were all painted out individually before applying them to the figure itself. And then that brings us to the conclusion of the painting of the German Stormtrooper. But that's not the end of this video by any stretch. Of course, this fellow was going to be incorporated in the FT-17 base, which, you know, unfortunately I <laughs> pushed to the side. If you haven't seen that series yet, please go back and take a look. But let's go ahead and put this character into a nice scene, a nice context. So the remainder of this video, let's make a small base for the Stormtrooper. The names that you see scrolling across the screen right now are my Patreons, and they make this channel work. If you enjoy this channel and like to support it further, please consider joining. In return, early viewing of these videos, special feature videos only for Patreons, work in progress photographs, and a Discord server for chats. I hope to see you over there. As mentioned, this will be a small base, so just, just enough size to give a little bit of context, give our figure a little bit of context. The plaster part, that came from the kit itself, so it's a little small base that the figure can stand on. And now let's just figure out what I want to do. Basically, it's he's going to be standing in no man's land for you know, lack of a better description of it. So now it's just a matter of putting all the elements together. So we'll take that plaster base, we'll secure it to the foam, and there's my Sculpey. Of course, I've already added some sidewalls onto the base, to the foam itself. We'll cut those back later and paint those out. And now it's just a matter of building up the textures. Well, this is a small base, so it doesn't take too long before you get all the ground, basic ground texture in place. Add a little shell hole there. The anti-personnel obstacles here, these sticks, those are the bamboo skewers, the same ones I used to make the palm trees on the Stuart diorama. And then it's time to start making some barbed wire. Okay, so for this barbed wire, I kind of had to figure this out as I went along here. So I have two strands of wire that's running the lengthwise, and this is bead wire, so what you would make necklaces and th that type of thing from. And then around that, I'm using a third piece of wire, and I'll do a couple of twists, or actually probably about three or four twists, and then make a loop, and then do another three or four twists, and make another small loop. And then at the end of all this, once I have a strand completed, then I'll go ahead and come back in with the clippers, and I'll just cut those off close to the, to the center wire, and those become the barbs on this wire. Of course, the shiny silver wire is not going to work, so I needed to paint that out. So a rattle can, just flat black, and then coming back in with a combination of whole red and rust color pigment, just liberally dabbling that all over everything just to change the color to get something that's more appropriate to our scene here. Well, speaking of our scene, the Sculpey has dried, so now I can start adding the ground colors and textures. This is AK's terrains. This is muddy ground. I'm just going to take a big scoop of that and just start applying it over the top of the surface. Yep, it's no man's land. This is no place to try to keep your shoes clean.
Now the nice thing is, at least the way I'm doing this scene, I don't even need to worry about waiting for the muddy ground, the first layer, to dry completely. I can come back in with other colors and start blending them in. This is dry ground. I like the way these two colors work together, the muddy ground and the dry ground. And I'll just add the dry ground to some of these high spots, especially around that little crater hole down there, just to add some contrast and a little definition to the scene. personnel barriers are all in place now just sticking those into the foam and through the top and just kind of tapping down around it just to make sure they're all nice and integrated into the scene of course those have all been painted out as well using AK Gen 3 and now just some of the fine details I want to lash some of these together using again that beading wire and I'll come back in and paint that in just a few moments Details on the base are all painted out. It's a pretty dreary looking base. Not a lot of color going on here. And then finally, we can take our barbed wire and start tangling that around these barricades. And then finally, everything is basically in place now, and so it's just those final last touches. Uh, using the terrains, the AK terrains textures, the same colors, the muddy ground and the dry earth, and just coming back in and just fixing some areas that might need just a little more attention. Well, a few final details here, and we'll start to wrap this project up. Now, of course, this is almost a continuation of the FT-17. Had I continued with that base, this would have been very much in character as how I would have proceeded with that larger base. You know, perhaps there'll be a time that I'll come back into the FT-17 and make a larger base and incorporate this stormtrooper into that base as well we'll see we'll see how it goes but i did want to make a nice base for this stormtrooper and show the techniques that i would have used on that larger base if you have enjoyed this video please hit that like and subscribe it does help so much if you enjoy this channel the propaganda channel and the work i do here i do have a patreon page the link for that is in the description below i'd love to see you over there until the next time everyone take care and of course happy modeling